Welcome to my next tutorial on Spectrum Synth. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about sound shaping and do a little custom tweaking on the Reactor Ensemble itself. I've added an oscilloscope to help us visualize some of the waveform behavior that we're going to look at. It's really easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do it now. Click on the Edit button and double click on the Ensemble level. Here you see the internal construction of the Ensemble. To enable our scope to show up like an object on the panel display, we're going to put it inside a blank instrument object. Right click anywhere on the blank field and go to Instrument, New Instrument, One In, One Out. We can connect one of the left or right outputs here to this box and we don't have to connect its output to anything. Go inside the instrument box. Now right click, go to Macro, Building Blocks, Displays, Microscope. Connect the input terminal to the microscope input. We're basically ready to go. Double click and again and there it is. If you want to adjust the size of the scope, we'll have to edit the view properties of the scope. Click on the pane button, click on the scope, click on the context menus, and check the view parameters, and change its value here. Reposition this fader, and away we go. I'm going to set up a panel set that only has the scope and the instrument on it. Click here, add new panel set, and select the objects that belong in this panel set. There we go. Now I'm going to the preset menu and I'm going to call up initialization patches solo oscillator one. And I'm going to make sure that it's sending to filter number one. And with a four pole low pass filter, I'm going to make sure that the cutoff point is set to maximum. A big part of spectrum synth is envelope generator control over volume. Here you see the envelope generator has to be assigned to control the individual volume of the solo oscillator number one. Envelope Generator 1 is housed up here in the Envelope Generator Stacked Macro. You can display the choice of Envelope Generator here, and we can tweak the parameters of Envelope Generator 1 here. Now let's add some filter cutoff point movement controlled by an Envelope Generator. Down here we'll select Envelope 2, select as a target Solo Oscillator 1's cutoff point, make sure that this fader is set to the right to access the lower targets, and give it some range. And now we'll go to solo section filter number one, and we'll make sure that the cutoff point is situated somewhere around the middle, and that the messages from Grand Central Station will have an effect by the range control here. And there we have a basic filter cutoff point sweep controlled by an envelope generator. To get an inverted effect from the envelope generator, just change the range value to a negative position. Now let's add a little pulse width modulation on the square wave. We can adjust the range of the pulse width modulation here, and we can assign a low frequency oscillator to control that pulse width movement. Let's use LFO1. We can choose from a variety of different waveforms. Make sure the symmetry control is in the center so we'll get a perfect triangle wave, and we control the range with this control here. Now I'd like to try a different modulation source, the sample and hold. The sample and hold is found in the LFO stacked macro. It's usually set to run from the clock from your host. So I'm going to press play on logic. I'm going to set the rate of the sample and hold to 16th notes. Now I'm going to show you how to set up FM synthesis. An easy way to get this going is to go to the FM bank and choose the FM initialization patch. It's got a combination of the two solo oscillators playing. So I'm going to take out solo oscillator 2, and this way we won't have any confusing stereo imaging going on. You're hearing the classic sound of a sine wave modulating another sine wave. At the moment, Spectrum Synth uses a sine wave as the FM modulating oscillator. Its output volume has to be controlled by an envelope generator. The audio or carrier oscillator, in this case oscillator number one, can be any wave that you choose. The sine wave produces the cleanest results. Choosing a square or a sawtooth wave definitely gives you a different kind of edgy complexity to the harmonics. I'm going to set this to unison mode. Voice allocation was one of the challenging parts of building this instrument. In upcoming videos, I'm going to talk about the keyboard modes and voice allocation. 
As in any FM synth, control of the FM event is done by having an envelope generator control the volume output of the sine wave modulating oscillator. In this patch, envelope generator 2 has been assigned to be the control. The target, FM volume, the range, and the correct fader position here so that the envelope generator controls the top choice. This gets interesting when you use other things besides a standard envelope generator as an FM control. I've added solo oscillator number 2 and assigned envelope generator 1 to control its volume as well. I'm going to switch the envelope generator that was controlling the FM modulating oscillator. Envelope generator 11 is a multi breakpoint envelope. This multi breakpoint envelope is polyphonic, so each key triggers its own start of the pattern. I'll be talking more about the multi breakpoint envelope on following videos. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.